All right, hello everyone. My name is James Slagle and I'm the uh, OOO PTL. Uh, I'm going to be updating you on what we're hoping to accomplish in the Liberty Cycle and what we've already accomplished as well. Next slide, please. So just real briefly, I wanted to talk a little bit about the OOO project's mission and kind of how that relates to kind of some of the big tent governance changes that have gone on in OpenStack. Um, so our mission has kind of always been to deploy OpenStack in production using OpenStack itself wherever possible. Um, so kind of what that means in the big tent model is that we have a lot of new services to deploy as a lot of as a lot of new projects kind of come into the OpenStack umbrella. We want to be able to deploy those. And but I think kind of more interesting is that there's also a lot of new deployment tooling and in, infrastructure tooling that we can actually deploy with. Um, so we're able to, to make use of a lot of those OpenStack projects as they kind of come into the big tent model. Slide three, please. So at a high, high level, um, during the Liberty cycle, we hope to be able to complete the uh, full Puppet-based implementation. Uh, we've already made a lot of progress on that during Kilo, and we've continued to make a lot of progress, and that should be wrapped up during this cycle. Uh, we're making use of the Puppet OpenStack project, uh, which is a new OpenStack project, and these are all of the Puppet modules that used to live on StackForge before, so all of the modules and manifests um, that you would use to configure your OpenStack services, uh, we've actually integrated with those and we're able to deploy a cloud using Puppet now. Um, we do have a very lightweight layer on top of um, some of those modules. We've tried to um, not really have a lot of logic in that layer and keep it as simple as possible as, as we can. We've also um, continued to invest heavily in HEAT itself. Um, so we're using HEAT in its template language to kind of model a complete declarative model of the cloud that we're going to deploy. Um, we're also making use of the HEAT environment feature and the resource mapping feature as well. Likewise, we've also invested heavily in Ironic as well. Obviously, we're using that for bare metal provisioning, um, but we're also using it for ready state configuration as well. Um, so things like BIOS config um, before you actually deploy to a node. And we're using the Ironic vendor pass through APIs to do that. We're also making use of Ironic Inspector, which is formerly the Ironic Discover D project. And Ironic Inspector allows you to uh, discover hardware attributes about nodes that are, are already known to Ironic. So you don't have to enter all of those attributes manually into Ironic yourself. You can actually discover those now. All right, slide four, please. Okay, so just kind of diving into a little more detail about some of the changes in triple O heat templates directly. Um, so I mentioned earlier, we're making heavy use of the resource re registry, and that allows us to map heat resources to different backend implementations. Um, this really allows us to enable and disable different features on demand. Um, and so one of the things that we were able to do is we were able to work on the new Puppet-based backend um, in parallel uh, to our existing templates that we already had um, and kind of keep the, the top-level template interface the same. Um, and we're using this same feature to enable and disable uh, features such as Pacemaker, um, Network, isolation and deploying in containers as well. Parameter de de defaults. Um, so 
So the way that the resource registry actually gets implemented is that your backend resources are actually implemented as uh, nested stacks. And lots of times these nested stacks um, have a different set of parameters themselves. Um, so parameter defaults gives you a way to, to set those parameters in those nested stacks without having to modify your top level templates directly. Heat and environments. So heat environments are really, um, they're just saved YAML files that combine parameters, parameter defaults, and the resource registry sections into um, a specific environment um, that you want to deploy. And so we have several of these examples checked into the tree directly. Uh, and these are kind of our recommended configurations um, for the different uh, ways that we can deploy a cloud. And of course, the, the model itself is actually very flexible. So we offer um, a lot of choices and options um, for the changes that people are able to make. All right, slide five. So this is just a um, high level deployment overview of what a cloud might look like that's deployed. Um, so we have a under cloud node um, in the first column and several con controller nodes that are part of your over cloud. Um, and then in the second column, we have several compute nodes. And then in the last column, we have block storage, set storage, and object storage nodes as well. So if we go to the next slide, slide six, uh, you can kind of see how that same deployment overview is actually modeled in the templates themselves. So we're making use of the OS heat resource group resource and those resources themselves are implemented as the different role types that you see here. So controller compute and the different storage type nodes. Um, and you can really start to get um, kind of a understanding of a high level declarative view of your cloud if you kind of start diving into some of the templates that we have. Slide seven. All right, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier as well, but just to kind of offer a little more detail, one of the features that we've had a lot of folks kind of working on is network isolation. And what this allows you to do is uh, define additional dedicated networks based on their traffic type. And this is important because you can provide needed network isolation among these different traffic types. Uh, so obviously, tenant traffic versus storage traffic versus internal API traffic. Uh, you can separate this network traffic out onto different networks. And these additional networks are actually defined in Neutron itself on the undercloud. Um, and they're created via heat and they're all template driven. Um, we're using static IPs from these networks to configure the actual um, interfaces on the deployed over cloud nodes themselves. All right, next slide. So on slide eight, um, this is just a diagram kind of showing off the network isolation and kind of what it looks like. Um, so we're actually able to isolate up to six networks right now. These are the most uh, common networks that people are really deploying with. Um, and the model itself is pretty flexible. So if you only wanted three networks and you wanted to, to set up this traffic sharing kind of just across those three networks, you could do that as well. Um, also shows that, you know, obviously not all your nodes are going to be connected to all the networks. And um, this is important because you don't want you know, all your nodes connected to the external network if that's not an actual requirement. Um, so again, all of this is modeled in our templates directly and allows you to kind of customize it based on the deployment needs. All right, slide nine. So we've continued to work on uh, being able to deploy a full 
HA Cloud, and we're also using Pacemaker as well for cluster management. Um, HA is actually, we actually always deploy HA with all of the, the templates that we use, but the Pacemaker part is optional itself. Um, and again, this is enabled via the resource registry feature. Um, and it's actually just a, a, a one-line change to kind of make in the, the heat environment file that you're using to deploy. Um, so that kind of shows um, how powerful that feature is and kind of what it's enabled us to do. Uh, we can kind of toggle these different re recommended deployment scenarios uh, with just simple changes in the heat environment. Slide 10, please. So we also continue to kind of refine the upgrade story. And one of the ways that we're doing that now is to kind of focus on a solution for package-based upgrades. Um, so we have a couple new resources in the templates themselves. Um, it's called update deployment, and it's, a, a, it's one of the software deployment type resources. And when you actually update this resource, um, that triggers heat to go run a script on your deployed nodes that's going to um, either execute a yum or app type um, package update. Um, there's a lot of complexity here and kind of what packages get updated in what order and kind of a lot of uh, ordering problems and dependency issues around service restarts, especially as it relates to a lot of the OpenStack services. Uh, so one of the things we're doing to mitigate that is that packages that are managed by the Puppet OpenStack manifest themselves are actually excluded by the update deployment. And later on in this upgrade scenario, we'll rerun Puppet Apply with the ensure latest flag set, and that lets Puppet OpenStack itself actually update the Puppet managed packages. So all of the, the dependency and ordering logic which already exists in the Puppet modules themselves, we're able to, to reuse that without having to, to re-implement a lot of that same logic. So that, that's what this scenario allows us to do. All right, slide 11, please. So we also have some folks working on deploying an OpenStack cloud where all the services are containerized themselves. Um, and we're actually reusing a lot of the container content from the Colo project. Um, so we're reusing their container build scripts and um, we're able to, to deploy these containers using um, Docker Compose. So we we have resources in the temp templates themselves, and we uh, just basically substitute the Docker Compose based ones for the Puppet ones instead. Um, and this has kind of enabled us to iterate pretty quickly on getting a containerized cloud deployed. Um, we've fo focused on just doing the compute nodes at first because there are less services on the compute nodes themselves, so kind of less things to, to kind of containerize and orchestrate there. Um, and we've actually been able to deploy a cloud um, where the compute nodes are container-based, but the controller nodes are still puppet-based. Um, and then we are working on switching the controller nodes over to, to be container-based um, during the rest of the cycle. Obviously, um, using Containers offer, offers a lot of um, nice features, such as um, atomic upgrades and rollbacks, and it, act, it also speeds up the deployment process quite a bit as well. All right, slide 12. So that's pretty much it for the overview. Um, we're working on a lot of other stuff as well, so if you'd like to connect with us. These are probably the easiest ways to do so, either on the OpenStack dev mailing list, and we're also on Freenode in the Pound Triple O channel. Thanks a lot.